So you're saying, oh, it's really sad. I can't believe we have food banks in Canada. You're the problem. You are the problem, lady. What a crazy week. Um, you know, I can't believe sometimes uh, when you look at a government official and they step in it, you know, you got to make sure you address it. So, uh, you know, today, a uh, couple of things that we're going to go uh, on about and I'm going to bring you up to speed on what's going to be happening. But um, hey, if you're new here, uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, you know what? Uh, we're going to be doing this every single week and our episodes are going to continue to evolve uh, in the world of investment real estate. Really, really excited about it because it's a lot of fun what we talk about. And of course, Canadian CPI was released this past week. And you know what? Uh, let's take a look at the numbers. That, that's going to be really important. The Deputy Prime Minister of Canada, I mean, I, you know, you know when somebody steps in something, um, sometimes they, they put one foot in the other time they put, you know, uh, a second foot in. Well, Deputy Prime Minister of Canada, she went neck deep on this one. And, you know, avoiding certain topics, I, I got to tell you, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we've been getting a lot of traction on uh, for a couple of our posts out there, and if you haven't picked it up, you know, take check it out on our YouTube channel, is um, Tim Sirianos' prediction that uh, uh, the Prime Minister of Canada, uh, Justin Trudeau, is going to step down in earlier part of 2024. Wow. And I got to tell you, there's been some people that uh, fully agree, don't agree, kind of agree. And then, of course, we've got uh, to talk about something really, really important, interest rates. And there's nobody better to talk about that. I've got uh, Dave Butler from Dave Butler Mortgage. He's going to be, you know, joining me about this. So, um, you know, I'm going to uh, I'm going to jump right into it with Dave. We've been talking about, uh, you know, the CPI and it's been an interesting year, but uh, recent announcement uh, didn't budge. 3.1. Yep. Flat. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, we've talked about this. I mean, uh, definitely November, December. Oh, this was the, it was the November print that came out in December. I think the December print will be fairly flat. Um, you know, you may even see in the December and even the January prints spike a tiny bit. Um, that's actually expected. There's some economists that are calling for that, but the real, you know, it, when you know, when you, when you understand how it's calculated, the real reductions sound like we might be getting some really nice pops down um, probably in the spring, I want to say, because it, it's funny if you actually think about it, a lot of the increase in CPI, both sides of the border, right? And in US and in Canada is higher shelter costs. And why is that? Well, because based on inflation, when you had all these rising interest rates, that means the next year it's going to be higher because of the the risen rates. Well, remember January after January, there's actually only been two. There was only two increases in Canada. So believe it or not, the February report, the March reports that come out, they actually should start to show a dampening, if you will, of the impact that uh, the higher uh, shelter costs are having, and that actually will start to. I think you're going to get couple points, you know, point, I don't mean a single point, I mean, point to point three reductions here and there, and uh, we should be on our way. So, you know, it's interesting because when we talk about obviously inflation, we talk about the Bank of Canada rate, um, lots of predictions being made there. South of the border, of course, the US Fed, they, uh, they've been sounding pretty bullish that they're going to put some pressure down on those interest rates. That was like the biggest flip that i've seen in a long time from a central bank like so what the no in november powell comes out and is very hawkish still right like saying hey you know we're ready to we're we're still ready to you know increase and tighten things fiscally if we have to very much there was no it didn't even seem like he was switching gears and then all of a sudden didn't even like come out dovish in December slightly and then talk about rate decreases comes out completely flip stance and says, we think we're going to be reducing rates by about three times next year. And it was just like, I think, well, he shocked the market. I mean, you saw the stock market reacted and the bond market reacted. stock market flew bond yields started flying upwards because obviously bonds started going down. Right. So, so if we take a look at even three, what's the percentage that's going to go down? I mean, I heard 150 to 250 basis points. Yeah, I mean, well, okay. So you've got your, you know, your consensus, you know, what the market is pricing in. And it does appear that they're pricing in 
three to four quarter percent reductions. But let's also be, you know, we have to also look back in this recent history, quarter point increases and quarter point reductions, albeit they are the norm. We haven't, that that hasn't been like in the last two years, we've seen 1% movements, half a percent sure. was kind of the norm. Um, so, you know, I think you're probably, you know, in theory, I think three to four, but look, I mean, You've got some smart people that are saying no. I mean, Benjamin Towell, who's a big economist in Canada, has been saying no. He thinks it's going to be like potentially up to six quarter percent changes. And again, all you need there is the bank of Canada to come in and do like a half a pointer. And that's two already that they're counting, right? So, yeah. you know, I have a bet. Uh, oh, we have a bet. Yeah, we, we have we a bet. real bet. And, you know, my bet uh, <laughs> with Dave was, of course, to figure out when our interest rates going to drop. We, we were talking about Canada. You know, we could talk about the U.S. Fed because the U.S. Fed, I think, is going to go a little bit earlier than Canada. I agree. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. Do we double down, make it two bottles? So we, <laughs> we, 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 yeah, a bottle of Patron uh, tequila, but Grand Patron. I don't want to. I don't want to. Well, I don't want to bet against you though, in something that I agree with, because I actually agree. I agree, Powell. Powell actually seems way more susceptible to making the move early. I still think the bet you and I have though is tied to Tiff. Right. Yeah, so, uh, so I'm <laughs> April, May, uh, you're June, July. Yep. And, you know, for Canadian sake, you know, I want to be able to say cheers uh, for <laughs> sure, because they're going to they're going to want to they're going to want to be part of it. That's for sure. A lot more going on in the news. And I got to tell you, so the uh, the deputy prime oh, minister that was of joke. Canada, um, we've got a CTV interview <laughs> clip with her, and uh, you gotta we we gotta listen to this. This is this, this is, is this is politics what right example? here. Example, not an announcement. What example can you share that would illustrate that you understand the the pain in the pinch that Canadians are feeling at the grocery store when they're doing budget? You know, how does it look in the Freeland household when we're in a prostitution <laughs> crisis? Well. You know what? Oh boy! Look at her looking for it. Yeah, that she has no idea what to say. My <laughs> where's Waldo? Life uh, brings the challenge home the most personally to me is that my church, which is around the corner from my house, just up the street from us up here, uh, the Church of the Messiah, uh, has a food bank every Wednesday, and the lines have been getting longer. And oh. that is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking that we have food banks in Canada. And it's really heartbreaking um, to see that people really need them. So I am grateful for uh, what example. She's no, awful. Oh she's my awful. God, she do is, you believe that? She, I mean, she's just not only did she skate around the question, she couldn't even give a reasonable answer. Like there was absolutely zero compassion other than talking about her church food bank. Yeah, I mean, uh, she's a funny one. I mean, if you when you watch all her clips, you know, she a lot of times will pander and 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 and, and she's sitting there thinking about how to answer this tough question and she like i mean that one was a joke yeah, hang, like, on, hang on the light was on there was nobody oh well, that's that what i mean ha, well you, you can see her <laughs> yeah. eyes like you actually see her eyes starting to think about like, what am i going to say that she seems lost i think like most smart people can see that um and that's scary man she should have thrown herself on the sword and said look you know what i don't feel the pain the same way most canadians i'm you know i'm entitled i'm you know i'm in a much better position like well don't you, you, know, you remember last time what she did though do you uh, remember i was waiting for her on this when i saw this clip like when i the first time i saw the clip i was waiting for her to talk about her disney plus description again <laughs> because if you remember she's the one that got laughed at when she said that you know canadians should be able they'll be able to save money and they can help themselves out out by doing things like getting rid of their Disney Plus subscription. That's what she said she did to help her household. And then when she got asked this question about what is, how does it feel in, in you, what does it look like in your household? She didn't even talk about her household. She talked about when she's driving or going past the lineup the, at the food bank. I mean, that is, you first of all, didn't even answer the question. Second of all, you make yourself look really stupid because your government. So you're saying, oh, it's really sad. I can't believe we have food banks in Canada. You're the problem. You are the problem, lady. Hang on. Hang on. Question for you, though. Yeah. 
when she drove by the food banks, was she driving an EV? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, thing. Hey, that's the other thing, right? No, she was riding her bike that she claims she rides and then gets caught, you know, driving everywhere. But, oh, man, this, yeah, I, I, I could go, this whole entire show could be me bashing her. So. Yeah, okay, so we got another one here. What do we got? As recently as last week, published some numbers which said 72% of Canadians think that Justin Trudeau needs to step aside. Uh, of the three people, the top three people who were named as possible successors, you came out on top. Oh, and no. Jolie and Mark Carney. So would you like to lead the Liberal Party of Canada? I am focused, first and foremost, on supporting Canadians right now. And you've just pointed out, people oh. need our support. Canadians don't want us focused on ourselves. They want us focused on them. And I am also absolutely supporting our prime minister who is leading our team doing a really really great job oh, can they God. win the wow. next wow. leader absolutely but i really have to tell you i'm ran journalists never believe this my focus isn't on the pools my focus is on my neighbors my focus is on the canadians i meet when i travel across the country my focus is on the great parishioners at church of the messiah who run the food bank every wednesday oh, at at my wow. double down double down cold that's what you know that's like it sounds so kind of sappy but truly you know when you I'll put by your fellow wow well, you know what I, I i i think she knows needs to go back to the bar for another shot because seriously that she is absolutely delusional and again in typical krista freeland style she dodges everything. She yep. like you know her 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 stand is like you know oh I'm going to support my neighbors. You're the deputy prime minister of the country. Yep. If you can't see that the guy leading the show is like lost it, I mean come on. I think they're both in, they're both in the same la la land though. So they're they're, they're well. So so on a great on our one of our last shows, you know, uh, Tim Sirianos was here in house with you and I, and yep. you know there were some predictions thrown out, and you know we like to predict, you know, the news as opposed to report it. And Tim Tim threw out a real doozy for you and I, and he said, look, he thinks that Justin Trudeau is gonna have to be stepping down, and you know. Here's here's the thing, you know, it was funny because on one of our channels, um, and by the way, don't forget you can click and follow us, uh, become a subscriber because we're going to talk about all sorts of fun stuff, mostly investment real estate, but you know, on one of our polls, so here's the thing. So you and I, and, and it was interesting because we talked about interest rates, right? Yep. So out of out of 100, if we talk about 100%, 69% said rates won't go down, Okay. Um, eighteen percent agreed with me. Thirteen percent agreed with you. Yep. Now we've got Tim throwing out, okay, a prediction on Justin Trudeau stepping down. Yep. And the funny thing is, is that with five hundred comments and the majority of them, and I mean, th that's not the percentage like that. I've been talking ninety-eight percent of them said, "See ya." Yep. He's got to go. Yeah. It's. Uh, I think we're all we're all pretty sick of him. I mean, I think even people that are supporters, you know, I, I, I talk to liberal supporters all the time that even, you know, shake their head and just say, we, we, you know, we got the wrong people. Okay. But, you know, and that's a common narrative. So yes. I, need, I need to ask you a question Yep. and maybe you can give, you know, us an answer. Uh, I know I'm going to try to throw one out there, but three reasons or at least one or two, why Trudeau is unfit to be the prime minister. Uh, he's a liar. <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> Hang on. No, 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 no. He's a politician. <laughs> they get a pass I... on that one. <laughs> well, I think he's... First of all, I think he's unfit. I think he's he's someone who has, has point blank said he doesn't care or even think about monetary policy, and that's the guy running our country. Um, so that would be one. The second one is I, I believe he has no compassion for Canadians and actually what they went through. Uh, during the pandemic and the other one was I think he's extremely divisive he he has I believe he has torn up Canada more from just as a nation than any other prime minister in the history of our country I don't remember even being a slightly political in my world up until this time and I finally in my is the first time in my life I actually I would say I care about politics because I care that this guy is ruining our country. I care that, you know, he has brought us to a point where, 
you know, we had we had our own citizens fighting against each other over their vaccination status. And all he did was gaslight it the entire time. That's not a prime minister. That's not someone who's supposed to be looking over the entire country and helping. Like he, 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 I just, I, I'm, I'm a big, yeah. I'm so, not a so, <laughs> so to touch on that. So I'm going to throw out a few of mine. And by the way, um, yeah, what are your three? Yeah. Yeah. So you're, so you're, in, you're a new dad. And, and I think that's why you also kind of entered into the political that's fair. view. You know, yeah, being that a is dad, fair. you're kind of going, okay, what kind of shit storm is my, my child going to inherit in the future? Right. So that is a hundred percent true. Happened. So yeah. I think, you know, when I became a dad, I think I was a little bit more conscious of what's being done around me in the world. But yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with your, 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 your vax, um, you know, I'm going to call him a vax ass because, you know, part of his attitude towards the whole thing and, and, and the truckers, you know, like them or hate them. What you saw was a group of people banding together with a Canadian flag, you know, showing Canadian values and not harming anybody. There was nobody physically harmed. Yep. If anything, they actually cleaned up Ottawa. I mean, it can be a real shithole, and they actually cleaned it <laughs> up, actually fed the homeless. But on, on top of that, what you saw was unity, okay? And, yep. you know, like it or not, you know, the Canadian flag's still the Canadian flag. And now, this guy, you know, one of my big problems with him is that, you know, he wants to continue to support, you know, other countries in their country for their wars. And look, nobody wants to have a war. Never, never, never. And yeah, supporting them, I think, with aid is not a bad thing. But when it comes at the cost of your actual citizens themselves, and that's the thing, he sent billions and billions of dollars to other countries, and he turns his back on the actual Canadian voter that put him there. Yep. And I think that that gives me one, two, three automatically no, you're just right. for that reason alone, because he, he doesn't recognize the fact that, you know what, you got to make sure your own house is in order before you start to help anybody else. It's, it's sort of like if you're in, a, in an airplane, right? Yep. They, what do they tell you? Put your, your own mask on first. Well, he won't do that for Canadians. No, he's, he, and he's also, he's importing voters. Like, let's be honest, like what he's doing here. He's, he's, he has, you know, I will say this. I mean, the tactic, although completely dirty and disgusting of what he's doing is from a political, I would say game plan, you know, he's executing probably the best chance he has at getting reelected. Although it's not seeming to work out, the polls are definitely not in his favor, but he is pretty much bringing in so many people and he knows he's hurting the current people that are in the country. But if he brings in these people, they are going to be voters of his. And then, and then if he gives them all government jobs, they're even more going to be voters of his. Yeah, but he's also pissing off all the other countries that they're coming from while they're at it. Like he is constantly doing a dance. Yeah. You know, and that, that's just one of those things. It's politics, right? But, and, and, and a lot of people are saying, well, hang on, you guys are really straying away from investment real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Is, you know, kind of all goes hat, hat in hand. You know, we've got we've got issues with housing. We've got issues with interest rates. We got issues with a government, you know, and it all in the big umbrella ends up swirling around back to, you know, what I call investment real estate. Hence the reason why we're here. And, you know, don't forget, hit that subscribe button because we're going to have a lot more fun shows. Especially. Yeah, this is not a political show. Oh, no, not at all. No, I mean, you know what? Sometimes it's hard not to get get in the trenches, though, because there's so much misinformation floating around. We got to deal with it. Realtors are getting really excited right now. Dave, you know this because yep. we're talking about real estate bounce. And, you know, real estate bounces normally happen after some form of dip. Uh, you know, right now, everybody's projecting 2024, uh, you know, a bunch of the main agencies have come up and said, Hey, look at, you know what? Five, six, 7% increases in pricing, even though we feel like we're still kind of on the downturn. So, so many people want to time the market and you and I both know you deal with this all the time in the mortgage world where people are, you know, pull the trigger, pull the trigger, pull the trigger. Then they finally pull the trigger. Sometimes late, sometimes they didn't hit the bottom. You should never try to time the market, but here's a couple of thoughts so some areas, so Texas, for example, they're saying, well, if you buy in these five states, you'll be rich in five years. And I kind of, you know, I never like a title like that, but hey, listen, how about it's a solid investment? It's going to be a good return for you. I'd rather use that kind of language. Texas, of course, um, they're saying for how home buyers, uh, Texas is going to be a big state 
for people to look at. Uh, Washington, they're saying Washington State. Look, I love the state of Washington. It's absolutely yeah. the bomb. It's beautiful. Um, you know, uh, North Carolina. Okay, never another, been. Another one. Uh, it's awesome. Have there. you been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raleigh. Yeah, it's it's really really cool. Uh, Tennessee. Yes. You know what? Definitely. Um, Tennessee is is a solid place, and of course Colorado. Now you know, hands down, I think, Dave, you're a snowboarder. Yeah. If, well, I, if, I, if I said if you're going to buy it, it's some kind of real estate right now, Colorado the place you're going? I was, yeah. I, was, I mean, I'm I'm looking at the five, and I'm going, okay, well, what gets me on the mountain? And uh, <laughs> Colorado, definitely. I doubt that's. I've always. I, I've what, you're not going to go to the mountains in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I might be. I might be going down. I might instead of snow, I'll be going down sand or something like that. But so it, it, a lot of people don't know this, but like you were a big skier. You you actually were like a professional skier before so like what so you've have you been you've been to colorado i'm assuming numerous times what was, was it back then it was like Vail was the place to go or was it uh we did uh we did breckenridge a lot yeah yeah, yeah. We did world cup there right so freestyle freestyle skiing did the world cup at breckenridge it's uh it's absolutely the bomb uh winter park all sorts of awesome places have you ever been back like ever afterwards and i only reason i'm asking is it's real estate related how have you seen the communities, because like, let's hear us and so, on. Yeah, yeah, so I actually get to see a community, because because here's the thing: when you're on when you're on the tour, right? You you don't have a whole lot of time to stick your head up. Yes, it's not like you're out going. No, hey, you're, let's 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 kind of meander. Let's get out of bed, you know, around ten, you know, go to the bar. You're studying, you know, you're studying your turns, your oh, jumps, man, everything, I right? So you, are you kidding? We had our butts kicked out at five a.m. Yep. You got to get on the hill by seven. You're kind of hating life, so you're not taking in all the beauty. You know what? I was never. You could never be a tourist when you did it but i agree i gotta tell you if if out of all of that you know texas you know i kind of kind of like the idea of texas it's got a, you know i like the boots <laughs> and the pickup trucks but i i will tell you this probably colorado would be my pick yeah yeah well it's uh well it's funny because you look at areas like i mean let's look here in ontario you know where we are here in ontario canada you know there's a a they call it a mountain blue mountain i, I like to call it <laughs> blue, blue hill, hill. <laughs> yeah blue hill but i mean it's funny when you look at the real estate development in the last 10 years yeah. that's actually happened in the blue mountain area Crazy. and then you see you know similar things happening in others but it's funny some of the greatest mountains to snowboard or ski on in canada are actually in national parks and you can't buy real estate yeah. in them right yep. so yep. very very interesting so it's colorado actually you know certainly i think there's a lot of reasons why colorado you know would be a place you know that they, could, they would assume um lifestyle. You know, yeah lifestyle and it, it, to be fair it's let's think about this there's a lot of people call them the boomers, you know what I mean, that have a lot of money now and they're going to be going into their retirement phase. And, you know, you're probably not going to be big city living when you're thinking about going retirement. So you start going to areas that are considered beautiful. You like to go to the mountains, go a little bit more remote, you know. So it's funny when you look at these five here, aside from Texas, right, most of those, you know, in Tennessee to an extent, but most of those you would consider as they're very beautiful states to be in and it, maybe people are moving you know maybe it's an age thing and they're kind of moving to the beauty part because i know for me i mean you know i don't think of retirement being like, i can't wait to retire and live in downtown new york i mean that's not that's that's not my retirement goal right so well that's why that's why you take boxing classes just in case you are <laughs> down into down to it. well the, you need to take boxing classes these days just because you need to know how to protect yourself in this crazy world i mean this is this is a sad world we live in sometimes so uh, yeah no great great thoughts so uh hey uh, if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you do and now now, one of the things, just so you know, for uh, the Simple Podcast, you know, we are based and focused on, um, you know, educating people in North America about investment real estate. And every single episode, we are going to turn around and I'm going to try to give you a tip. Now, you know, why should you take a tip from me? Well, I'll tell you what. I started from the ground up as a real estate investor. You know what? Uh, you know, bought my first property basically about 14 years ago currently have 3,000 units under management, about 1.3 billion in assets. You know, one of the big things about how this all came about was, I gotta tell you, we went through some tough times. Like we learned the hard way. It wasn't, you know, there wasn't a playbook that said, do this and this happens. Every single situation is different. And so I'm gonna be doing Todd's tip every single week 
And one of the most important things is I'm just going to share you some of my experiences. You know, I, I got to tell you, I've had uh, just a plethora of them. It's crazy in this world of investment real estate, all the obstacles you have to overcome. And so part of the reason why we're doing this podcast is, you know, uh, Dave's going to be joining me regularly and we're going to talk about financing. We're going to talk about how you analyze numbers because that's really important. But I'm going to start off by the number one tip and it's decide your why to become a real estate investor. Because, you know, so many people, they, they think it's the flavor of the month. It's something that they should be doing. You know, oh, my friend's doing it, so I should do it. Or, or my parents made money doing it, so I should do it. Well, here's the thing. You got to decide your why. Because I will tell you firsthand that the first time you have a major issue with a tenant, you're going to want to run away. It is really tough. Those obstacles are going to come at you. Doesn't matter if you've hired a manager, you're the manager. Doesn't matter if the place is condemned, if it's brand new, it doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you the human element of being a real estate investor always plays out. So my number one tip to you is figure out your why, okay? Because your why is going to be your driving force. It's the thing that's going to get you through the tough times. And it's the thing for you to be able to turn around and start off with a plan and move forward. So once you've got your why, the next tip I'm going to be giving you on our next episode is we're going to figure out a plan. So I'm going to put together a couple of steps so that if you have not bought investment real estate before, you're going to be able to take a couple steps forward because we're coming into 2024. It's going to be a good year. And just so you know, everybody needs a roof over their head. Why can't you be the one that provides it for a tenant? That's this week's podcast. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I want to thank Dave Butler from Butler uh, Mortgage. Uh, definitely cool to have him on board with me. And big things coming up in 2024. Don't forget to subscribe. Catch me on all my channels. I'm Todd C. Slater, The Simple Investor. Thanks for tuning in.